Colorado Springs, how are you? Hello. Thanks for waiting. No, no problem. Hey, I'm a theist. Um, actually, I just wanted to say, I, I watched your show a couple times, and I don't think that you speak for every atheist. Um, we can't. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I, I don't speak for every Christian. I, I had a question. I had uh, that last week, uh, I was talking about morality with an atheist or an agnostic or something. He didn't wear a sign. But he... Uh, he said that I couldn't base my morality on the Bible, um, and he brought up how there's stuff in the old, I mean, the old, you know, the Old Testament that I don't follow anymore, but that the Ten Commandments are in the Old Testament. And I said, well, you know, I brought up to him about the Sermon on the Mount and the fact that, you know, when Jesus came, he started a new law. And what he brought up was, he said something about four tassels on the sand, on the corners of a gun or something like that. And I vaguely remember, I actually looked that up online, and he's right, that is in, in uh, Leviticus. And that's in the Old Testament, nobody does that anymore. So he said, well, Jesus never said to stop wearing four tassels, and he never said to stop doing this and stop doing that. And because of that, that I couldn't just say that the Old Testament didn't count anymore, and he said I was cherry-picking. Well, I think, now, I think Christians want to have their cake and eat it, too. You know, there, there, there is this quote uh, in the New Testament that, uh, uh, that Jesus says, I've not come to change the law, I've come to fulfill it. I, I know, and, and I've seen that. Then, well, I talked to my pastor about it earlier today, and basically what he said is, no, that's wrong, and I should read the Bible. And I didn't seem very helpful. And well, I can look up the quote for you if you'd like, and you can well, read it. Okay, so so there's this comes up a lot. Um, what your pastor probably meant is that it's his interpretation that Jesus was um, coming to fulfill the sacrificial laws, um, the the other 603 of the 613 commandments, but that the Ten Commandments remain because Jesus himself referenced keeping those commandments, but actually he just picked and chose out of the list of 10, uh, so he doesn't actually cite all 10. Um, but none of that really matters to me because if you look at it in a broader context, first of all, it's one thing to say, well, there's bad stuff in the Old Testament. Well, why is that? I mean, did God, was God just an evil person before and he got better? Um, you know, what? what you that? Sorry? You, you said like, there's bad stuff in the, in the Old Testament and the, did God used to be a bad person? What, what do you mean by that? Well, once upon a time, the Old Testament's all there was, right? And it was, it was God's instructions for people. Right. And, and then now we have, in, in Christianity, we have the New Testament. And you're looking back on it and saying, yeah, there's some stuff in the Old Testament that is not good. You know? Um, so what happened? So you're saying that, you're saying that God made some laws and then later he changed them and why? I'm not saying that. That's what the Bible's saying. Well, I'm, but that's what, you're, that's what you're getting at, though. Yeah, my, my thing is um, you've, got a, you've got a God, and, and by the way, there's, there's tons of immoral stuff in the New Testament, including in the Sermon on the Mount, and et cetera. But, so you have, you have a God who sets out his moral commandments for people, and supposedly he's moral and just and wise and all-knowing, or you know, maybe at least not all-knowing. Maybe he just knows way, 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 way more than us. Um, so why on earth could he ever be stupid enough to set forth laws um, that endorse and encourage slavery or encourage people to kill witches or uh, have things about wearing mixed fabrics and, and all of these things that we, we shun and say, no, 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 that stuff doesn't matter. Why was, if, they, if God was perfect, why, why was there to... ever any need for a 2.0, and why is the 2.0 not really better than the 1.0? And why does, why does it need uh, religious leaders to spin it? Yeah. That, well, that kind of makes sense. And you said something about there being slavery in the, in the New Testament. Yeah. Or, did you actually say in the Sermon on the Mount? I'm sorry, what? Did you say there was mention of slavery in the Sermon on the Mount? No. No, I don't believe so. But in the, in the New Testament? Yes. I need to read some more. Yeah, the New Testament specifically instructs slaves to um, uh, obey, their, obey master. their masters 
even the cruel masters. It doesn't say, you know, if you, if you got slavery wrong, you would think that any decent god coming out with a new version would say, oops. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that stuff that they wrote about slavery back then, they kind of misunderstood, or maybe I was wrong, or whatever, but thou shalt not own another human being as property. But slavery isn't ever repealed in, in the New Testament. It's not changed, it's not altered, and the instruction becomes, slaves obey your masters, um, even the, even the cruel ones. Well, it seems to me that the only moral thing you could ever tell a slave is do your absolute best to escape and take everybody with you. Do not obey okay. and do not sub subject yourself to cruel masters. You have a, you know, a duty and an obligation to overthrow your cruel masters. That's moral. Yeah. So, this is secular morality improving on. That's in the New Testament? Yes. Yeah. This is, this is why I called you guys, because if I ask other Christians, and they're just going to tell me the same stuff over and over again, and I won't, if I'm, if I'm going to believe in God, I want to know that, that, I can, that I can defend my belief, like it says in, in Good for in you. Trump. That's awesome. That's how I got here. <laughs> how you got where? That's how I in got to be the president of the atheist community of Austin. <laughs> I was, I was studying with the intent of being a minister. I wanted to be able to defend my beliefs. I wanted to be able to demonstrate um, what, was, what seemed obvious and true to me, and, then, and that was that a God existed, and that Christian, the Christian God in particular was uh, the correct one, and that my beliefs about Christianity were not just true, they were rationally justifiable, and they were moral, and I found out that I was wrong on all counts. So hats off to you for, for going through that process. I, I think that's very admirable. Well, I mean, you can't be right. You never get to being right just by listening to the people that agree with you. Um, that, that's awesome. Unless they're right. <laughs> so you don't know if they're right until... There well, you go. Yeah, yeah you got to be right for the right reasons. If Very you want, good. If you want to be Very rationally good. justified, you I need to know that they're is there, is there somewhere that I can look up any, like, you know, you guys... Uh, yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I'd start at uh, wiki.ironchariots.org. And there you can actually read my verse-by-verse -verse deconstruction of the Sermon on the Mount, but also Skeptics Annotated Bible, um, which I think is coming out with like a print version and stuff very soon. Uh, SkepticAnnotatedBible.com. You can actually click a thing like, what does the Bible say about? And then there's a whole bunch of stuff, and you could click slavery, and you could take you right to the verses in the Old and New Testament about it. Wow. Okay, so that's Wiki at Iron Chariots? We, it, it's www.ironchariots.org. But you could just do wiki.ironchariots.org. It's a counter-apologetics wiki that Russell and I started years ago. Okay. Uh, yeah, I just, I, yeah, I'm not saying I'm not changing online just because I read some stuff you guys read on the Internet. But, yeah. but thank you for, you, I'll tell you this, you, you definitely put, to be, put together a better argument than my pastor did. And that doesn't mean that you're right and he's wrong, but at least you're willing to talk about it. I, awesome. I, I, yeah. I'm definitely changing churches. Yeah, we, we invite you know, questions. Read the Bible some more. That's, that's kind of frustrating. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I actually, I actually I encourage that. Um, if you're not happy with the response that you're getting in the church that you're in, by all means, look for other churches and go around until you get an answer that you find satisfactory from one of them. And then well, I'll just read the Bible. I mean, you know, people can be wrong or whatever, but the Bible isn't changing anytime soon. So, but I really nice appreciate, your time and, and I appreciate your time and, and uh, taking it through. I know it's not your job to, like, be a Bible scholar when my pastor isn't, but but I appreciate you at least kind of talking me through my questions. Cause sure, well, we welcome those sorts of questions. Thanks, Joseph. Thank you, Joseph, and good luck to you. Yeah, have a, have a good rest of your show. I'll be watching. All right, Thanks. take care.